So I'm pleased to be here today to announce that the security infrastructure program is being expanded to a $5 million a year program. Hey there, Sid Fizard with Rebel News. Uh, right now, of course, you're investing in religious infrastructure, but I think many around the province have the a concern that you may not be uh, best protecting their religious freedoms, as we've seen with Pastor Arthur Pulowski. Uh, he still remains behind bars. This is well over 30 days. Uh, if you could just comment on that situation and maybe uh, perhaps ease some concerns or just uh, give some light to that situation. So in, in Canada, we have something called the rule of law. We're in solitary confinement, 22, 23 hours a day. This kind of treatment I have read about during the Soviet era. I know about the Saudi Arabia, North Korea, or China, but I would never ever imagine the people are treated in such a way, in such a horrible way, in the province of Alberta, in our beloved Canada. You, Jason Kenney, should be charged for breaching your own mandates, restrictions, and a court order for partying at Sky Palace. The same week you arrested pastors for breaching that court order, you broke it. You should be in solitary confinement beside Pastor Arthur. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Sydney Fizard for Rebel News, and today we're here to talk about Premier Jason Kenney as well as Pastor Arthur Pulowski. Over the weekend, we actually posed a question directly to Jason Kenney, and this happened during a press release where he was announcing a doubling of his investment into the critical infrastructure that revolves around religious organizations and other organizations that may be sensitive targets when it comes to arson or other vandalism type attacks. This is something that comes in the passing of what we saw last year, which was dozens upon dozens of churches being burned or otherwise destroyed uh, over the course of a few months. Hey there, Sid Fizard with Rebel News. Right now, of course, you're investing in religious infrastructure, but I think many around the province have the a concern that you may not be uh, best protecting their religious freedoms, as we've seen with Pastor Arthur Pulowski. Uh, he still remains behind bars. This is well over 30 days. Uh, if you could just comment on that situation and maybe uh, perhaps ease some concerns or just uh, give some light to that situation. So in, in Canada, we have something called the rule of law. There was a lot in that response, and we're going to answer all of it today. And we're actually going to allow Nathaniel to do so, who's the son of Arthur Pulowski, who remains behind bars. As the Pulowskis have put out a line-by-line -line response to what Jason Kenney had to say, and they announced this to the group that congregates at the Calgary Remand Center every day, standing in solidarity with Pastor Arthur Pulowski, hoping for his release in the near future. Premier Jason Kenney has detained more pastors than anyone could have ever imagined possible here in Canada, all in the name of public health orders. Especially we see this with Pastor Tim Stevens and Pastor James Coates, who refused to limit their churches to comply with government COVID dictates that violated their religious freedoms. And especially right now, we're seeing it with Pastor Arthur Pulowski, who has been behind bars for over 30 days now. This is for giving a sermon to truckers who were blockading the Coots border after two years of arrests and jailing related to COVID rules on places of worship and secret Alberta Health Services court orders. To see the full story, go to SaveArthur.com where you can see all of this in further detail. And uh, according to him and according to his family members, he has been in solitary confinement for the majority of his duration so far. And so that is why we asked Jason Kenney this question. And after we hear from Nathaniel Pulowski, we're actually going to hear from Archer Pulowski as well, who remains behind bars, but through a phone call conversation with his family members, we were able to hear his response to what Jason Kenney had to say as well. We've included that in the end of the video. But I hope you guys enjoy. And remember, if you want to help Arthur and his legal defense, you got to go to SaveArthur.com. I have, I'm going to be making an official statement, uh, a response, a rebuttal to what Jason Kenny said about my dad, Pastor Arthur. He made a statement regarding Pastor Arthur, every word of which was a lie. I want to go line by line and show exactly how every statement he made was deceitful. First of all, he is making a statement in a church how shameful and disrespectful and disgraceful to speak about a pastor 
who has fed the poor for 20 years in this manner, in a church of all places. Second, his whole press conference was about protecting religious freedoms and places of worship from hate and violence. To that, I have a question. Where were you when our church and ministry was being attacked? Where were you when someone set our house on fire? Where were you when the ministry vehicles and their tires slashed, windows broken, and wheels unscrewed? You, the media, and other politicians have incited hate and violence against my father, Arthur, and our family. While we slept, an arsonist tried to set us ablaze, and you did nothing. You said nothing. That is on you. Where were you when our church was vandalized? Where were you when the media lied about us saying we terrorized the neighborhood even though it was us who were attacked by acts of hate and violence? You only stood with those churches that support you and bow to your regime. Anyone else receives tyranny. I quote from Jason Caney's statement. This is a quote after he was asked about Pastor Archer. Quote, in Canada, we have something called the rule of law. In Canada, we have something called the rule of law, where courts are responsible for adjudicating uh, criminal charges against individuals, not politicians. So uh, we have an independent judiciary. That is a lie. We no longer have an independent judiciary and court system. If the justice system truly was independent, you, Kenny, would have been found guilty for breach of court order under the Rook order. The rule of law means an equal application of the law and that everyone is subjected to some laws, to the same laws. Kenny has shown that we no longer have the rule of law. In Alberta, there is one law for me and one law for thee. The last two years have shown that the courts and judges are far from independent. They are rather political enforcement tools in the hands of the politicians. The rule of law does not exist under Jason Kenney's regime. Let's continue with Kenny's lie-filled statement. Uh, that individual, I understand, uh, has been uh, detained under, uh, uh, by the police because of multiple breaches of terms of release, uh, court orders, uh, as well as uh, an incitement to, uh, an alleged incitement to violence uh, at the Coots border crossing blockade. This statement is completely false and in fact, misinformation. Actually, Archer is detained and charged with mischief over $5,000, aiding and abetting the blocking of critical infrastructure under the Critical, Defense, Critical Infrastructure Defense Act, and allegedly breaching a bail condition for, quote, not keeping the peace. He's not detained for multiple breaches and or court orders. He's being charged for exercising his free speech, free speech and vocally opposing your tyranny. The incitement to violence claim I want to address directly. Jason Kenny, I have a question. I'm not being facetious or hu humorous. I, I really need to know. Are you a moron? Seriously, I have to know if I'm dealing with an intellectually handicapped individual. You realize that speech is published and available to the public for which you claim that he incited violence. One, two, three. I'm gonna go slow so that you, ca you, you can catch this. Three times in that speech, Arthur explicitly states, I am not talking about violence. I am talking about peaceful resolution. I am not talking about guns and swords. I'm talking about peaceful resolution. I'm not talking about guns and swords. Oh, you see, no. this image, this image right here, it was the most powerful thing I could ever do. What kind of brainless individual could interpret that as incitement to violence? Quote, That individual has all the rights of any individual uh, under the Canadian legal system, uh, they are presumed uh, guilty and, sorry, should be presumed innocent until proven guilty, of course, in our system of law. Is that a Freudian slip? They have a right to access to counsel. That individual or any other individual has all the same legal rights as anybody, end quote. So actually, Kenny, that individual does not have the same rights as any individual. You arrested him and several other pastors in Alberta for keeping their church open while you drank whiskey at Sky Palace. 
with your buddies free of legal consequences. Liquor stores, marijuana shops, and Walmarts were allowed to operate, but church was deemed illegal and unessential by you. I have to apologize. That first part of that statement you corrected was indeed true. Arthur is presumed guilty as you have him locked up in solitary confinement for 35 days now before he has stood trial, had his day in court, or been found guilty. He is not a flight risk and has, not, and has no criminal record, yet you treat him worse than a violent criminal. In, Cal in Calgary, a man was found guilty of murder and yet he was granted bail. The double standard and hypocrisy is clear as day. Arthur is right now being presumed guilty, so we no longer have the presumption of innocence in Alberta, thanks to Jason Kenney. Furthermore, Pastor Arthur does not have fair access to counsel. The prison has denied visitations and has repeatedly denied the lawyer's phone calls to their client. Arthur does not have the same legal rights as everybody else. Under Kenny's regime, Arthur has been placed has been placed in the worst conditions possible in Canada, a seemingly free and democratic society. A pastor who has not stood trial or been found guilty is still in solitary confinement. Continuing the quote, this is a matter that is before the courts. It's before the courts, and um, uh, you know, as, as, as a more general comment, um, I would just suggest that going to a very tense, combustible situation and uh, inciting people to be willing to die and commit acts of violence uh, for their cause is uh, uh, very likely to have legal consequences. And I would suggest that, uh, you know, nobody is, uh, is above the law. No politician, no uh, person that calls himself a pastor is above the law. The rule of law applies equally to everybody in our system of the rule of law. I want to unpack this narcissistic, untrue, misinformed, hypocritical, full of contempt statement. First off, being willi willing to lay down your life for a cause that is dear, important, and just in your own eyes is not a call to violence. Being willing to die for a cause such as freedom does not imply violence. Those fighting for freedom during the Solidarity Movement in Eastern Europe and the Civil Rights Movement in the United States were willing to die for their cause, but fought peacefully. Being willing to die means you are willing to sacrifice and pay a price for the cause of freedom. Because as we have seen, the government punishes and cracks down on dissidents and opposition. Jason Kenney claims that nobody is above the law and that the rule of law applies equally. In that case, I look forward to Kenny turning himself in to the police for breaching a court order. This hypocritical and narcissistic statement will be the nail in the coffin of your political career and reputation. You, Jason Kenny, should be charged for breaching your own mandates, restrictions, and a court order for partying at Sky Palace. The same week you arrested pastors for breaching that court order, you broke it. You should be in solitary confinement beside Pastor Arthur, if the law is applied equally and if the rule of law still exists, Jason Kenney protects himself, his regime, and his own. Kenny, do you really think you can fool the people into believing you, that you stand for religious freedoms and freedoms in general? You reward those that obey your tyrannical, illegal, and unconstitutional mandates. Everyone else you ticket, harass, defame, attack, arrest, and jail. You have arrested more pastors than communist China. You will forever be remembered as the man who persecuted, harassed, and imprisoned Christian pastors. The history books will remember you as the worst premier in Canada's history and as the man who persecuted Christians. You have successfully given the title of the most persecuted man in Canada to Pastor Arthur, and that will be your legacy. The legacy of a failed premier, a corrupt tyrant, and a deceiving fraud. Thank you. Free Pastor Art! Free Pastor Art! Free Pastor Art! Free Pastor Art! You just gave uh, quite the powerful speech there, and it was, what was that based off of? That was based off of 
uh, the Pavlovsky family's rebuttal and response to Jason Kenney, to his horrendous, deplorable statement that he made about my dad, Pastor Archer. How many days has your father been in prison now? This is his 35th day in solitary confinement. Uh, and you gave me a little, uh, a briefing on what was happening the other day at Saturday. Uh, could you just reevaluate that for me? What is his current situation? So he's he's still in solitary confinement. Uh, the lawyers should know uh, within the next few days when the next bail appeal date will be. Uh, but as of right now, he is in solitary confinement indefinitely. If you had a just a message for Jason Kenny, just in your own words to summarize everything, what would that be? It would be resign while you still have the chance to walk away with this with a shred of dignity left because right now nobody believes your lies nobody believes a word you say uh, you have proven to the Albertan people that you are deceitful and that everything you say you go back on um, so you've lost all credibility and uh, your actions against pastors in Alberta speak for themselves and as well, right now, Pastor Arthur Belowski remains behind bars. Uh, and this is something that we've actually seen in the past as well with Pastor James Coates, with Pastor Tim Stevens. Uh, what do you make of this string of pastors being arrested? Why is it that in Alberta, Canada, the, the Texas of Canada, why are we seeing this here? That's a good question. I believe it's because pastors are on the front line when it comes to opposing tyranny, when it comes to opposing um, mandates and rules that are against our uh, one are religious beliefs, but also are constitutional uh, values. So pastors are on the front line defending those freedoms and defending their people. Um, so pastors are very much looked upon as the shepherd, uh, shepherds of the people. Uh, people look up to them and follow them. So when several pastors in Alberta defied the Kenny regime, uh, he needed to crack down on them and uh, silence that opposition. How does it feel seeing the premier of the province saying that your father was trying to incite violence? I mean, it's insanity. I'm, I'm truly shocked by that because, again, three times, three separate times, my dad clearly prefaced. He's not talking about violence. He's talking about peaceful resolution, not guns and swords. So where did he get this incitement to violence? Why? Because people should be because he said that people should be willing to sacrifice for their values. Of course they should be. As we've seen with any civil rights movement around the world, people value those freedoms so much that they are willing to die for them. That doesn't, that isn't a call to violence in any way. And in, a, in that speech saying three separate times, I'm not talking about violence, I'm talking about peace. How could you interpret that as anything else? Is there anything you would like to just say to the camera, say to everybody watching right now? Do not forget about this story. My dad has said time and time again, if they, if this happened to me, if they came for me, they'll come for you. If they come for a pastor, this is how they treat pastors in Canada. How do you think they'll treat you? How do you think they'll treat your children? Do not forget about this story. Do not let the politicians and the court system get away with this. If you do, this sets a precedent to every Canadian that this is how they treat opposition in Canada. If you had a message for other Christians, other Catholics out there, uh, people that follow the same faith, what would that be right now? Because I think there's been a lot of silence as it's been for the last two years. I mean, pastors, where are you? Clergymen, where are you? Your brother is sitting in solitary confinement and you are staying silent. Where are you? Christians, where are you? They're, you're letting them get away with this. By not coming here, by not supporting your fellow Christian, you are you are complacent with this regime and you're complacent with this treatment of a pastor. Where are you? Why are you not here? 35 days in solitary confinement. Is that the Canada you want to grow up in? Is, it, is that the Canada you want to leave for your children? So there's your wrap up from Nathaniel Pawlowski and our interview with him as we were observing the event they host every day in support of Pastor Archer Pawlowski, who's been behind bars for over 30 days now. And now we're going to hear from Pastor Archer Pawlowski himself from behind bars in the rare moments where he's between solitary confinement. So listen carefully, because right now, more than ever, his message is being stifled. Well, I heard about Jason Kenney and his comments about me. So I have, I have this to say. He's talking about the rule of law that, of course, he himself and his cabinet members are not following. The Rook Order caught him in a sky palace just like everybody else. 
so the rule is not equally applied to everyone. And obviously, in the province of Alberta, there are two laws, one for them and another one for the rest of us. One law for the year, one law for me, apparently. That's how the game is being played. Jason Kenney, Minister of Justice right now, which is the most appalling, most shocking corruption I have seen in decades in this in this country. How come a minister that has himself three right now, how he fights three allegations, has become a minister of justice? The same man that broke the rook order alongside of the minister of finance, chiefs and the minister of environment, Nixon. Those people have lost the ability to understand what is the rule of law and equal application of the law. And I, 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 I'm lost of words at the level of corruption in, in the Kenny's government. I mean, those people have lost, like I said, the ability to know what is right and what is wrong. The level of hatred that I receive as a clergyman from Jason Kenney is shocking, not surprising, but shocking. We are dealing with extremely corrupted people in this country and corruption always, always has hated the clergy people that were exposing that corruption. In other words, darkness hates the light. And right now he is talking about protecting the freedoms, the, the freedom of religion, while at the same time he has jailed, imprisoned pastors. It's absolutely unbelievable. So there is no equal treatment. We are in solitary confinement, 22, 23 hours a day. This kind of treatment I have read about during the Soviet era, I know about the Saudi Arabia, North Korea, or China, but I would never, ever imagine that people are treated in such a way, in such a horrible way, in the province of Alberta, in our beloved Canada. So Jason Kenney is a coward, he is a liar, he's a manipulator, and he is the biggest hypocrite I have ever seen on, on this side of the ocean. Please go to savearcher.com if you want to help my dad with his legal defense and to keep him out of prison, to get him out of this uh, horrible situation. The inmates are so happy that we come here every day. Uh, they're banging on the glass, they're, they're shouting, they're, they're, uh, they can hear the music, so they're uh, singing along. Um, it provides them with so much hope, so so much faith in humanity. It restores their humanity, some of them are saying. Some of them are saying that they're, they've never seen a family so devoted, so kind, and so loving, that when they get out, they want to join our church. Uh, they, they're saying that we, that they've never felt anything like this before, and they're so happy that someone out there cares for them, cares enough to come here every single day and uh, entertain them, speak to them, sing, sing to them. Uh, so they're so happy we come here.